we talk about web development, <coughs> there's sort of two aspects to it that if you have a project and you don't do either of them right, the project is going to be not successful. You have to get them both right in order for it to be a really good website. And those are the technical aspects of web development and the design aspects of web development. The technical aspects are things like what are the HTML tags to do this, that, or the other. And we spent a good portion of the class thus far covering that. And we've covered quite a bit of ground. <clears throat> we have the basic structure of the page. We have um, the basic yeah, sections of the page. We have links. We have images. We have text. We have the ability to format text. And you can go far with just those tags. There's certainly more tags than that, but we can go far with just the tags that we've learned. We just started talking about CSS, which relates to the appearance and the physical layout of the page. And we've just sort of stuck our toes in the water as far as that goes. Now, that, those skills have to be tempered by sort of a design sensibility. In other words, we have, uh, we've given you the ability to literally make everything on a web page be a different color, be a different font, have a different background, and so on. But obviously, that's not a good idea. All right? So the design sensibility is how you take the technical skills that you know and apply them in a way to further the communication potential of the page. How to make the page communicate the chosen intent better by using these things. All right? <clears throat> so we're going to talk about what makes for good web pages, what makes for good websites, what makes for well-designed pages and websites. <clears throat> and that's what your next assignment is about. And this will sort of dovetail into our discussion of the project and the portfolio. So we're going to start off talking about the project, then we will do the portfolio. All right. If I were to ask you what makes a good web page, or website for that matter, what would you, what would you list? What would be some of the characteristics that you would define for a good web page or a good website? Okay. Okay. These are both two two good ones. Appealing color and. I forget exactly how you worded it, but something like good information. And can you repeat what you just said? I'll call that well structured. And I'll tack onto that <clears throat> consistently structured. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Um, use of space. So things are not crowded together. Anyone else? These are all great characteristics.
Okay. All right, these are all great characteristics. Um, and they all definitely have their place. <coughs> the one thing I object to when I see a lot of people talk about web design is the focus is on colors and fonts and images and so on. I'm going to sort of flip that around, all right? And I don't want to put, as they say, the cart before the horse, OK? For me, a good website is one that allows the users to easily achieve their goals. In my mind, that's a good website, all right? And also associated with that is whatever the organization is. Achieves their goals. Why are we making this website? What are we trying to provide? What are the users intending to get out of this site? That's the reason that people visit this site. Now, all the things that were mentioned over here, if they're done correctly, will assist the user in achieving their goals. All right? Good use of font, use of space, well-structured, consistent layout, good information, appealing color scheme. All those help the users achieve their goals. And that's why they're important. Websites aren't like paintings. You don't visit them to look and say, wow, that's a beautiful website. You typically are visiting a website to get some information, to perform some activity, you have a goal in mind of doing it, all right? And websites can either be designed in a way that makes that easy or makes that hard to do. Does anyone have in mind an example of a well-designed website or a good website? YouTube. Okay, let's go and visit YouTube. What do we like about YouTube? All right. Very good. The layout, one of the things that we mentioned, it's a good, consistent layout. Well, here we have the navigation going down the side. And we have the search on the top. So the layout is good for that. The color scheme. Again, remember that if you use color judiciously, it can help the user navigate the page. It helps point things out to the user. If you use too many colors, though, it just serves to distract the user. All right? One splash of color will get the user's attention. 50 splashes of color on the page just serves to distract them, and <clears throat> they don't know where to focus, and so on. Now, the one thing that if we were logged on 
as a particular person, the, uh, we might even see a better example of that because the, the, the videos would be uh, geared towards our interests. In other words, if we watched a lot of basketball videos, there would be among these recommended vi videos a lot of basketball videos. All right. Whereas this, since we're not logged on as anyone, it just brings up some generic stuff that it thinks it might be uh, of interest to you. All right. And the one thing that you, you can't forget, one thing that you can't forget is it has great content on it. All right. There's an old saying in web development that goes back, I think, to the beginning of web development. Content is king. All right. In other words, you have to provide good content for your users. Or the layout, the design, none of that really matters. All right. And YouTube, again, is sort of the standard bearer of videos. You know, um, you can find videos of almost anything if you go on YouTube and therefore its content is rich enough that it is, uh, you know, it provides great content for the users. Does anyone have a choice, another choice of a good, we a well-designed website? Amazon. One thing that you'll notice as you navigate your way through Amazon is no matter where you go on the website, oops, this top navigation stays consistent. Just as YouTube is sort of the world's largest supplier of videos, Amazon is probably one of the world's largest suppliers of products. If we look and pick an item, you'll notice that every product looks approximately the same. So, you have an image here, you have a description of the product here, ratings, frequently bought together, customers have viewed this item also viewed, sponsored products, reviews, and so on. Let's think of how this serves both the goals of the organization and the individuals visiting this. Reviews are effective in helping people decide what to, what to buy. So the reviews are fairly prominent. You can go down and you can see the reviews. Frequently bought together. Well, that helps both the organization, that is Amazon, and people that are visiting the site, the users. If I'm going on a vacation and I think, well, I might want to pick up a couple of novels to read, and one of my friends recommended this one, well, I can look to see what was bought together. And that both helps me because that will help me get a recommendation of a second item to buy, but it also helps Amazon because it helps them sell two books instead of one, or maybe even three books instead of one. There's a lot of space in the layout. The layout is consistent, so you know exactly where the stuff is. And again, the content is so good, you can pick um, almost anything that you're interested in, and you can find it and buy it. This is not an advertisement for Amazon, by the way. All right. Over the summer, I was in uh, the play uh, Mamma Mia, and I played the priest. Well, I borrowed a costume from another theater uh, group in the area, and I had the priest 
black shirt and the white collar. First day of dress rehearsals, I lost the white collar. So I was like, oh, what am I going to do? So what did I do? I went on Amazon and searched for priest white. And there you go. So with Amazon Prime, I lost it on Monday, and by Thursday it arrived. So I was in shape. So, you know, um, they provide a good service to their customers at a pretty good price, and their product line is, is comprehensive. And their website makes it pretty easy to find stuff between the search button, the way things are categorized, the way they recommend things to you, and so on. Again, the other thing that we don't see on here is if we logged in to a particular person's account, we would see things customized specific for them. So you get recommendations. So if you bought books by a certain author and they came out with a new book, you would likely see that on your, on your home page. Here's my choice for a really well-designed website, and that's Google. All right. Now, if you think about it, this is a very, very bare-bones website, right? You look at it, the screen is, is practically empty, all right? But notice that. The one thing that is here is a search bar where you can type in something you're looking for. As you're typing, it gives you a list of suggestions. <coughs> and if I do a search, it will give me very good search results. So the goal that most people have when they visit Google is what? Is to search the site, is to search the internet, and to find the best possible results for whatever it is that they're looking for. Uh, if you type in restaurant, like let's type in Asian restaurant, notice it's going to show me things within the area. So not only does it give me good restaurant, uh, good recommendations, it actually customizes them to my location. All right. Actually, again, if this was a if this was a dedicated machine dedicated to one person, it would use the search history to help people do that. So it provides good content. You know, um, what I mean by using the history is um, if you did a lot of searches for baseball. All right, and you search for Washington Senators, it would show you the baseball team, which I don't know if they're still around. They used to be around in the old days. I don't know if they're still around anymore. Or if you're, if you're an ornithologist and you search for Baltimore Oriole, it would show you the bird, whereas if you're a baseball fan, it would show you the baseball team. All right, so it provides great content. Think about why people come to Google. People come to Google. Maybe to do other things, but primarily they come to Google to search. And the design of this page has made it very easy to achieve that goal. <coughs> and they give good quality results. Is anyone aware of a website that isn't so good? <laughs> What's it called? Ling's cars. If you can see here, there's just so much going on. All right. 
it does not allow people to achieve their goals easily, I wouldn't think. If anything, you're likely to be distracted by what you see here and not find what you're looking for. There doesn't seem to be, well, here's, there's a little bit of like organization where cars are broken down by the make, but here doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason for any of this, and so on. All right, so a well-designed website is a website that helps people achieve their goals. Now here's something to recognize though, all right, is that not everyone visiting a website is visiting that website for the same reason. Not everyone visiting a site is visiting a site for the same goal. Now for some sites, maybe more so than others, but if you think of a large site, that whose audience is a general public, there's going to be sort of segments of the users that are interested in one thing versus another. All right. For example, what are some of the reasons people would visit Lorain County Community College's website? Okay, they could be looking for the locations. They could be looking for classes. It's another reason someone could be visiting. Okay. All right, anything else? Yeah, figuring out. So if we look at these, just looking at these, we see that there's at least two groups of people that would want to, that would possibly want to visit Lorain County Community College's website. There would number one be current students. And number two, prospective students. Now, they may have some things in common, but they also may have some things, some goals in common and some goals that are different from each other. All right? Who are other groups of people that might be visiting LC's website? Yeah. Staff. Anyone else? Let's add a few more. Parents of students. Under prospective students, we can talk about high school students, and we can talk about non-traditional students. Maybe someone who's in their 30s and who's worked a particular job for a while and for whatever reason wants to change careers. 
right? Community College is a great place for them to come and see what, what the offerings are. There may just be members of the community. That maybe would look for some kind of non-credit course just to do for fun, all right? Or even a credit course just to do for fun. Not interested in pursuing a degree, but maybe just wants to take a course just for something to do. Or maybe see what the events are on campus. <clears throat> What's going to be playing at the film festival or the film, uh, whatever it's called, this week. All right? Or are there any concerts at Stocker? Or do the sports teams play? Or whatever. All right? Businesses. Seeking training for their employees. All right? There may be a business who is converting their software from one language to another, and they need their developers to learn C Sharp, for example, or HTML, or something like that. Thank you. So they may come to LC to see what kind of offerings. LC can make for their situation. So there's a lot of reasons why, there's a lot of different types of people that could come to a website looking for information. So when you consider defining the goals for a website, you should address as many of these goals as you possibly can. All right? Don't just look at one type of user and say, well, they need this, that, and the other. But look across a range of potential users and try to define a goals across a section of different types of users. So that's where we're going to start the discussion of your project. <coughs> because your project you're going to you're going to you're going to complete in two stages. The first stage is you're going to prepare a design document. The second step is you're going to provide the actual completed website. So if we go down and look at the project, project, you're going to create a small website. You can choose whatever topic you like. I make this project open-ended because <clears throat> I think if people are motivated to work on it, if, there's a, if it's a topic that you care about, you're bound to put more time and effort into it than me assigning you a topic. So choose whatever topic you like, provided it's appropriate for a college class. The key thing here is making sure that your topic is, not, is neither too broad nor too narrow. If you're going to say that you're going to do a website about music, that's kind of broad. It's very broad. If you're going to say you're going to do a website about the history of country music, that's a little more narrowed down. And you might be able to develop a good website for it. The more specific that you can design your, uh, define your topic, <clears throat> the better chance that you have 
creating a good website because it's the more specific the topic, the easier it is to define the goals. If you were to create a website about music, wow, what are the goals of the people? Does, are the people wanting to learn how to play music? Are they wanting to understand music? Are they wanting to learn how to read music? Are they going to know about classical music or jazz or, or pop or whatever? The topic is just too broad, and you can't really narrow it down to some specific requirements that will allow you to achieve the goals. But if you define it more specifically, that really helps you a lot. I mentioned there may be an opportunity to develop a site for a nonprofit organization as part of a service learning project. Uh, as of now, I don't have any nonprofits that are interested. So you're pretty much on your own as far as coming up with a topic. Your final project should contain six to eight web pages, each containing a reasonable amount of content for a web page. All right. That gives you a sense of how much content is there. So if you have eight pages, but each one only has a sentence on it, that's probably not adequate content. We're going to follow a methodology that is a set of steps in creating the website. First, we're going to design the website. And then we are going to actually go and create it. You'll design a design document first, and then you'll have the final website. Has anyone given any thought to what they might do for a project? Yes? So my job doesn't have a website. So okay. I'm kind of thinking like maybe create something for that. Okay, that would be an excellent, excellent um, option for that. What, uh, what is the organization you work for? Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds like a sounds like a good uh, a good possibility. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, the one, one thing I would caution you is uh, a lot of the stuff that you would do on a site like that would probably be on the scope of what we're covering in this class. So uh, you might want to make it easy on yourself and not you know, go for maybe a, a simplified version of that or certain aspects of that. All right. The big problem that a lot of people have is either they think too broad or too narrow. And it's part of my job to help you figure out what's a good topic. Because almost anything that you come up with, we can make a good topic out of it. All right? And we can either narrow it down or beef it up a little bit so that it's a sufficient topic. The other thing to be concerned about is, you know, are we going past the scope of the class? Now, if it's something small, for example, if you want to include a video on your site, sure, we can spend a few minutes in lab or whatever discussing how you can add a video to your site. That's not a problem. But if you want to do something extensive that involves database interactivity and so on, we don't really cover that in this class. And so that probably wouldn't be the best choice. OK. Here is the methodology that we are going to follow. Notice there's two, two drop boxes. Notice that you are already very late for both of them because this was due in May and April. I need to update those dates. I think, I think the syllabus has the correct dates on them. Yeah, 
the syllabus shows the correct dates for them. But I'll make sure I change those as well. All right. Now, if we choose to define our uh, a well-designed website and a, or a good website as one that allows users to easily accomplish their goals, along with allowing the organization to accomplish their goals, <clears throat> then right off the bat, what we want to identify is the goals of the site. What are the goals of creating the site? What, are, what is it that we're trying to achieve? All right. Remember, the more specifically you can define that, the better off you're going to be. All right. Ideally, it's going to be something that's measurable. Like if you did a website for a restaurant, maybe your goal is to increase the patronage of the restaurant by 15 percent. All right, that's a measurable goal. You can create the website and you can track and see did your sales go up 15 percent or not go up 15 percent. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to identify the goals. All right, and that's what you do in the strategy section. So this is going to be just a Word document that's going to have four sections in it, and it will also have some a set of HTML files. In the strategy section, the first thing you do is you make a little statement about your website is about. I'm going to create a website for uh, Joe's Restaurant. All right, Joe's Restaurant is a, you know, family-style diner, you know, in Lorraine. And it's been open for five years, and so on and so forth. So you're going to identify a description of the site, its topic, and purpose. <coughs> you're then going to create three user personas. What's a user persona? A user persona is a type of user that's going to be visiting your site. All right? Type of user that's going to be visiting your site. When we talked about LC's website, we said that there's different kinds of people that are going to be visiting the site. Because LC's site would be a big website, there might be more than three personas. We came up with, I think, six. And there might even be more than that if we thought about it. When you create a persona, what you do is you actually make up a fictional person. You say, here is John Doe. This is what they look like. And you get a picture. Take a picture of one of your friends. Or go on the web and look for something licensed with Creative Commons or whatever. And you make up some facts about them, not make up in an outlandish way, but you make up things that you think are representative of a certain kind of user. So if we were talking about a non-traditional student at Lorain County Community College, we might say that John Doe is someone that was a journalist. They went to, they went to college for journalism, and they did that for several years, and they decided they don't like it. They've been doing a little bit of web development on the side and decide to want to make a career out of it. That would be the typical kind of story that you would hear from a non-traditional student. Now, obviously, you can't create a story for every kind of user that's going to visit the site. But you pick the most common, the most typical, and create personas for them. I think I have an example persona here on the site on Canvas. I 
And I lied. Let's, look, let's search for one. All right, here's an example of a persona. All right, Brandy Tyler. What group of people she represents? This is for a shoe store. She represents a, uh, a group, uh, she represents people that have narrow feet. Now, let's back up for a second. What she's really representing is people that have unusual needs for shoes, right? Not just narrow feet, all right? Narrow feet is a story that they made, the person developing this persona, to make this person seem more real. All right? So they said, this person has narrow feet. What they really mean is this is a person that has a hard time finding shoes that fit her. It could be someone that's seven foot tall and wears a size 23. All right? It could be someone that has uh, really wide feet. It could be someone that has really narrow feet. That's what they chose. All right? And they give some other facts about her. And they talk about how shopping for shoes is actually a, uh, um, a stressful situation because she can't find shoes that fit. All right? She needs a size 4A with shoe. She would like to purchase several pairs hoping that she doesn't have to sacrifice style or option when searching. Here's, where her, uh, here's what her frustrations are. And here is some actual comments from real life customers of this shoe store that sort of fit in this category. Let's look at another persona. All right, this is done a slightly different way. And they give her characteristics, talk about motivations, and so on. Here's someone that has a little bit of fun with it. Oh, I see. You're, you're absolutely right. This guy is someone who is uh, uh, purchases heavy equipment, and they give some personas. Now, you don't just do this just for the fun of it. Uh, you don't just do that just because someone told you to do that or just as a, a, an exercise. You really do that because 
here's some of them that I viewed. I know I had the wrong screen on. I just Googled user personas, and then we looked at some of them. same thing again. You do this to sort, sort of, if you pardon the pun with this one, put yourself in that person's shoes. All right? So one of the things that they talk about is, is there the ability to filter shoes at the shoe store by width? So that I could say, all right, give me all the shoes that are 4A. All right, and I could pick it up that way. So you create these personas, and you put yourself in the shoes of these people when you're thinking about what your, what your site ought to have. What can you put on your website that can help someone that has specialized needs for shoes? What can you put on your website when you are... trying to help this person whose goal is to uh, be more healthy, all right, and to uh, cut down on unhealthy eating and to get more exercise and to improve their overall health. What can you put on your website that would, that would achieve these things, all right? So you keep these in mind. And for each of these personas, you develop three goals. Now, I picked three personas and three goals simply because that seemed like a good number for the project that we're working on. In a real project, you would have as many personas and goals as you thought that there were. All right? You wouldn't limit yourself. But for this assignment, it should be sufficient to think of three personas and three goals. If you can't think of three personas, talk to me about it, and I can help you. Because sometimes it's not always easy to see uh, you know, who, what potential personas are, but I guarantee almost any project that you think of, we can think of different groups of users that are going to be visiting it. All right, we'll pick up next time, finishing this up probably, maybe talking about the portfolio. We'll see you up in lab.